This house tour is brought to you by the new House & Home Designer Collection for Scotties. Eight great patterns to mix and match. Find your style with Scotties. The project was really focused on making the house feel like our clients, Jen and Brad. It was a new build, they bought it from the builder, so they hadn't put any of the finishes in. It had very builder standard finishes in it, and it just didn't reflect their personality. They had great pieces of furniture, but it just wasn't really pulled together. So we wanted to make it feel warm, inviting, bring color in, but in a more subtle way, and just get rid of a lot of the heaviness that the house had before. The kitchen was probably the biggest sort of problem area when we started the project. It was high gloss white cabinets with very heavy, dark, chunky wood gables. It had one of those like the kitchen desk in it that no one really uses. The cabinets were different depths. So it was just not Jen and Brad's vibe at all. We kept the configuration of the kitchen very much in line with what it had been. But in particular, the pantry wall that we put in Jen really wanted green in her kitchen. So we toned it down to sort of a more like sagey, almost a sea foamy green, which I think is really beautiful. It's soft, it's more in keeping with the color palette throughout the rest of the main floor. And then we did this very cool curve profile on the doors and we lined the inner panels with a Philip Jeffries vinyl. It's sort of a faux seagrass weave, which is great because it brings some beautiful texture into the space and also just is a very durable finish to go in a kitchen. And then the rest of the cabinets, we didn't want to do a white kitchen, but we also didn't want dark. So we picked an off-white, it's a Sherwin-Williams color called Gossamer Veil. Very calming, very serene, creates a nice contrast with the white walls, which we're planning to keep. We also brought texture into the kitchen with the cabinets on the range wall. The upper cabinets there are all finished in a lime paint finish, which mimics the look of plaster. It's a subtle texture, but it's there. And we didn't want to put door profiles on all those upper doors. I just wanted to keep it really clean. And that's just a nice way of bringing interest and drawing the eye, but in a very kind of earthy, natural way. And then the other big sort of texture story in the kitchen is the countertop. We used a quartzite there and it's got all the tones. It's got the taupes, the whites, a little bit of beige in it. It's got enough veining without being really in your face. It's a great texture to live with long-term. Apart from the pantry wall, the biggest change we made in the kitchen is that previously they had a smaller island and then they had a separate eat-in table. And it was very awkward. There wasn't really enough room for the eat-in table. It was sort of in the way of your path through to your backyard sliding door. So we wanted to make sure that that pathway was clear. So we eliminated the table, made the island much longer. And so they've got space for five people to sit at the island if they want and eat around the island. And so getting comfortable counter stools was really important because that is where they do their day-to-day -day eating as a family of three. So it works really well for them. They can even have guests over and eat there. And then otherwise they've got their dining room. All the furniture in the family room was actually pre-existing. They had the same high gloss white and chunky brown millwork for cabinets that flanked the fireplace on either side, which Jen hated. We pulled those out and we did some beautiful oak cabinets with black frame doors above, display shelving again with glass doors. We put lighting in there and the conversation that we had was that they agreed to style the shelves properly. Like that was sort of an agreement from the get go. They were a client who was very committed to investing in the pieces that would make the spaces feel polished. And that was sort of the deal for bringing in open cabinetry. And it has a really cozy, comfortable, laid back kind of California vibe to it, which makes sense for the space. And I think all the other pieces kind of work towards that same feeling, but it's definitively more sort of casual than the living room. In the living room, we wanted to make the room feel as big as possible, but to keep it separate from the entry. And so we really had to figure out the layout, in particular the sofa, which is a custom piece of furniture, was specifically designed to kind of wrap itself, its arm around the space that is the living room, but still keep it open to the entry so it's easy to sort of flow in and out. So the pond shaped rug, they are fabulous. Again, when you have an awkwardly shaped room and you have a room that does not have four walls, it was a really great tool to allow us to capture more of the floor space as part of the living room to make the room feel bigger. 
We always come to the house and tape out pawn-shaped rugs by hand to make sure that they're actually gonna hit where the pieces of furniture are gonna go properly. So for example, the chairs in this space are swivel chairs. So you can't have like two legs on and two legs off the carpet. It's gotta be all on or all off. So we really had to be very careful to make sure that the shape was large enough that they could comfortably sit on the carpet. Another great thing about the pond shaped rug is that we can cut out around floor air registers really easily in a very natural way. Whereas when you're working with rectilinear rugs, sometimes you have to have the rug so far off the wall to clear the register and keep your straight line. So it's, it's another benefit to this sort of organic shape. So the living room had the fireplace that you see in a white drywall wall with nothing in these niches on either side. We really wanted to create a space that was a focal point. So that's why we added the slab of marble, which is very beautiful, it has this like deep plum color in it. So again, that color, but in a subtle way. And then display shelves. But I am a big believer in limiting the number of open display in houses. So one of the techniques that we did here, because the ceilings are quite high and we needed to fill the space, is we thickened up the shelves. So they've got this sculptural kind of quality to them, and it just means fewer shelves. The shelves themselves have some heft, so you don't have the need to really fill them completely with stuff. And I think it works really well and balances the scale of the marble surround around the fireplace. Previously, the owners had just a metal railing that was dividing the dining room from the living room because of the level change. And it was really clunky looking and it just made the space feel even smaller. So we replaced that with glass panels to just open it up more modern. You can see right through. It just makes that dining room space feel much more open. The other big change that we made in the dining room is it had a pre-existing in-wall, like kind of an 80s vibe to its display space. So again, back to that, you don't need so many open shelves in your house. And I don't really believe that anybody needs to display their dishes in their dining room. But rather than just fill that in with drywall, that was the perfect place to create a real feature for an amazing piece of art. So we built a box to line that niche with. It's actually finished in a real sprayed metal finish. So it's got some real richness and depth to it. And then the idea is that that becomes the frame for the piece of art. So that makes that dining space really special. And I think brings the focal point that it needed that it wasn't gonna have by like the huge table or that type of thing in that space. The bar area was just this weird empty space that the previous owners hadn't done anything with. Jen and Brad love to entertain, so a bar was just a natural fit for them. I think it's sort of always been a dream of Brad's to have the bar. It's not tucked away, you can see it all the time, so picking really beautiful finishes was important for that. So we used the same metallic sprayed finish on the lower cabinets to get that sexy vibe of the burnished metal and paired that with bronze poles. And then we've picked a really dramatic slab of quartzite. It is a favorite slab of mine. And then we pulled in this very grayed down plum purple color, did a Philip Jeffries grass cloth, painted the upper cabinets that color, put in some smoked glass shelves. So there can be that, again, that bit of sexy bar vibe in that space. I think the layout of this house is very natural feeling. It's not a typical layout for a Toronto house. It's got a beautiful flow. Like you can flow to every single space on the main floor multiple ways. It's open concept, but also there are walls around each zone. So it's kind of the best of both worlds that way. And I think that's why it has this really comfortable, natural feel to it.